Since the last video, I've used this a few times and it's worked slick. The carburetor kit solved all the problems of it running and everything. And as I did mention though in the last video, the gas cap does leak on it. And I figure just because it's been sitting and everything else, the vent has failed in it. Unfortunately, the proper cap for this is like $22 and I just don't have any um, extras laying around to try to see what the right threads are or play that game. But then I had the thought um, of taking the system off of basically an echo trimmer that uses a different vent with a solid style cap. And I can show this a little bit better later in the video. Um, but I'm going to try and swap all that out. So I'm going to start by taking the gas tank off, cleaning it out, making sure all the gas is out of it. And then I can actually take the cap out and show you what the issue is with the vent. And then we can go from there and see about um, basically installing this new vent setup. So like on the setup you have your fuel fill line with the filter and like that and your return line from the primer bulb and then you have this third line that has a vent it has a filter basically at the top it's like a little check valve but this allows the gas tank to breathe rather than using the cap so part of this process will be making sure that the cap will actually seal rather than vent at all and I think we can do that looking at it briefly so like I said I'm gonna start with taking the tank off taking the hoses off the carburetor, remove that from here, making sure all the gas is out of it, clean it out and like that, and then we can work on it and dive into this a little bit further. Um, so I'm going to get that all set up and I'll be right back with you. So the biggest problem with this, or I should say how this one works to vent the gas tank, is there's um, your tether to not lose the gas cap, but then there's basically a one-way, yeah, and you can actually see this is the problem. So there's this one-way check valve that sits on top of the cap that only lets air in but not gasoline out that way you can move this in all different orientations and you don't have to worry about losing gas and then the um, gas can can get air in so that it can continue to flow fuel to the carburetor so on and so forth so there was a piece of foam that was in here but as you can see it sort of dissolved and rotted away and if we pull the rest of the cap apart let's see you can see these um, grooves here that's where your air is actually going to come in from around the gasket so, let's see, this plastic piece that goes up in, this is your rubber sealing gasket, and then the air would actually come in through these various ridges in through this check valve. So, that is how that would work. So we need to overcome that by basically making this a solid cap, which I think all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the original sealing o-ring out of this and put it in here and I'm probably going to take some gasket material and just fill those grooves and then I think if we just crank down on the cap it'll be there. The downside is we lose the tether to hold the cap there but since I'm pretty much the only one using this I'm not too concerned about losing the cap and we can always come up with something later. This is just a proof of concept. So on this you have your Let's just double check. So one of these lines is going to be your fuel return and one of them is going to be the fuel to the carburetor and if we look down in, it's actually the black line that has the fuel filter on it. So that's your fuel inlet. And so it's just the same setup as the replacement. So I'm going to pop the rubber grommet out of here and pull this out and see if the hole is the right diameter for this. I suspect we're actually going to have to make the hole on the tank a little bit bigger to fit that grommet. Um, but I won't know more until we pry this out. So let's just see if we can grab ourselves. screwdriver and without stabbing myself if we can carefully work this out of there just to get a better idea what we're working with here Let's see. I don't really want to I don't really want to damage it just in case there we go and everything goes everywhere so yeah that's exactly it so we have our fuel filter the grommet for it and actually the grommets look look to be the same diameter. Let's see. Very similar at the very least. <laughs> I think they are. I think this will work without having to modify the tank at all. And as you can see that fuel filter is seen better days too. So two birds with one stone on this one I think. Let's pick up our pieces here. Make sure we have everything. And just give this a nice little wipe there. And the gas tank's pretty clean. I mean, I would take this opportunity to flush it out, so I may just spray some carb cleaner in there. Yeah, let me, um, let me, 
rinse out that tank a little bit and I'll uh, I'll be right back. There, got that all cleaned out, rinsed all of the, the cruddies out of it. There's like little bits of stuff in there, so definitely need to do that. Now, a note on this. Um, so I mentioned that the appropriate cap for this is like 22 bucks, so I definitely didn't want to throw that much into this. So I did find on eBay, um, I basically looked up echo part numbers because I knew that they had that external vent idea and I found this guy for five bucks shipped so this was a good option but if you can see there's the part number for it and everything if uh, you have a similar situation the only downside that I saw was in that package they had bent it up enough to kink this now looking at it I can blow through this fine it doesn't really seem to cause any issue I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in through the grommet through the tank in such a manner that the grommet faces this direction so it actually bends the hose the opposite way and I think over time that will solve the issue and if uh, if it does become an issue I mean I'll just swap that piece of fuel on it's not a big deal but for now we'll just uh, try it this way as a proof of concept so we should be able to just slip everything back in through the original opening and like I said I'm going to make sure that it lays this way so I want to make sure that I have the yellow return line actually facing towards the back. Dump that in there. And it should be able to just pop this into place. I could could always measure the two. Uh, maybe I will double check just in case that... Boy, that is awful close. I don't think that... I don't think I have to measure that. Smart man would measure it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna live dangerously here. So, let's see. sure like I said that bends the appropriate direction and the biggest thing too you want that to lay flat in the tank because it's the filter itself is sort of weighted and that's what makes it so that the fuel pickup is at whatever angle you have the tank at man this is cumbersome with the uh, flashlight there but we can just bend or the camera there but we can just bend that into place Just like that. Cool, all right. That's a step closer. And then what I'll do is I'll just have the vent off to this side of the carburetor since the hose is left to be se separated anyhow. So that's not too big of a deal. Now onto the cap. How do we temporarily solve this problem? Because I don't think that the gasket, ah, another thing that went flying that I didn't pick back up, I don't think. ruh -roh. Yeah, let me, uh, let me look around for that, I'll be right back. There, I found it. I swear it only took me like five minutes, but... And of course it was right below the bench, so... I think... I think we might be able to get away with just putting that in there. The... The, uh... Grooves in the bottom aren't very deep, so... I think if we just crank that down, we might have luck, and I'm actually going to... Going to reverse the gasket so that the original side that went down in the tank is actually facing in and this might give us our best chance of actually sealing that. Now, I'm not 100% confident this is obviously going to seal properly, but might as well try this without going before going through a ton of a ton of work not to. So that should put some pressure on the inside. So, let's just try it out. Screws on fine, it doesn't seem to bottom out. Uh, but yeah, see, well, I guess that was part of what I was worried about. The issue, part of the issue is, is that because of the circular nature of this and being in the center, it keeps the gasket centered. This is not, this piece is not, say, very big inside of here. So what happens when you screw it on, it kind of works to one side or the other. And that, that might be an issue. I don't have any kind of gasket material on hand, nor do I think I have any, I don't have any cork or anything like that either. Um, let me see if I can scrounge up something that, that might work as a replacement for this. I'll be right back. May have come up with a solution. I took this piece of, well, a straight piece, but uh, some extra vacuum hose that I had laying around and I cut it in half and then I cut it into a circular shape and pressed it in there. Now obviously it's starting to roll a little bit, but I think it's roughly the right size so I'm gonna try it I'm gonna put it on there and try it out and if this does work then probably my next step will be to actually get some gasket material 
and uh, use that instead. But if this is going to work, then um, we know we're on the right track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this all together, uh, install it back on the trimmer, and put some gas in it, and we'll try it out. We'll go from there. I didn't show any of this before pre, uh, taking the tank on or taking the tank off or putting it on or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All it is on this is just uh, just two two screws that hold that on there. Just sets up in. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with the camera in the way. Let's see. Let me get around here without ruining the view. But just very simple. Just cut two screws, hold the tank on itself, and then we'll hook up the uh, the fuel lines. And you don't have to go cranking these down too hard because you don't want to crack the tank or anything, but obviously you don't want this coming off while you're using it, so just snug them up pretty good. And then, as we noticed before, the black line is still the feed. Oh, we're going to have to either snip some off or see if we can push some down in. It's a little too close to, the, to that. I think we're actually going to trim the feed line instead of pushing it down in because that was plenty long enough. But we just don't want to run into an issue. Just trim a little bit off. It just presses into place. And same with the return. No clamps or anything. And then we have our, our little vent here, so that should be able to put enough... Make sure that the tank can get enough air to allow fuel to go in. Uh, this is going to already be cumbersome, I can tell, with this makeshift gasket here, but I wonder if we can heat this with a heat gun or something to get it to lay flat. I'd like to just try it on there without putting too much time into this. Get that on there. So it should just screw into place at least. Well, it screws on. There's plenty of threads there to grab, so... Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's, uh, let's see if it looks any different. Let's see if we can tell if it moved the piece around. Ah, so yeah, that's already going to be a be kind of miserable to mess with. Um, I'm going to go off camera and take the heat gun to this a little bit just to see if I can get it to lay flat a little more because as you can see it wants to curl to its original shape. I don't think I'm going to have any luck with the heat gun, but I'm going to give it a shot at least, so I'll be back. Well, I ended up abandoning building the gasket idea out of that piece of vacuum hose. And I went with something that might be uh, a lot dumber. I actually <laughs> used hot glue. Um, I took the original piece we had here, I sanded off the ridges on the other side, and then put a nice ring of uh, hot glue behind it, and kind of pushed it down and twisted it a couple of times until it stuck. And then I filled the center with a little bit of hot glue, and then this will allow us to actually use our tether, and we can put the original gasket in, and that should keep it from leaking. Now, I don't know if gas is going to eat at the hot glue and break it down over time and maybe even cause more problems getting into the fuel or whatnot. I did a quick and dirty little test of putting a blob in some gasoline and then some in some carb cleaner and I don't see it breaking down right away so uh, maybe we'll get lucky with this but I figured hey we can have two experiments in one this way so I should be able to put the original gasket in here put the tether back on put the cap back on the trimmer and uh, I'll go do that I'll put this back on, put some fuel in it, and uh, hopefully the next part of the video you see it running. Alright, so I've actually primed it already and made sure the fuel went through and that all looks good. The cap doesn't seem to leak after that, so let's see if we have any issues getting this thing running. Like I said, I primed it a bunch of times already, so should be good to go there. How about that?
doesn't seem to be leaking at all, so I think we have some success here. Don't want to jinx it, but I would say problem solved. The only thing I do find a little interesting is the uh, the vent is leaking a little bit. I've seen that before, but I'm wondering if I just need to trim that hose off down inside a little bit. But I'll keep an eye on that. Um, it's not leaking enough for me to be concerned, and the cap doesn't leak. So uh, this is definitely safe enough to use again, and uh, that's awesome. That'll make a few things easier. But uh, anyways, uh, thanks for watching.